Hello, hello, welcome to the Everyday Ordinary Extraordinary Podcast. I'm Martina, I'm one of your hosts, and I'm here with Christina. Hello, everyone. And we were inspired to create this podcast after pondering this question. What will the world look like where we can be inspired by every person? And usually we're very quick to compare and judge ourselves and others. And when we do that, everybody's losing. So depending on my point of view, I can either feel small because I come out lacking or arrogant and dismissive because I feel superior. Those are the only two options and neither of those options make us feel great. So here's our thought. Someone's everyday normal is someone else's extraordinary. Judgment comes from first impressions and invite you, the listener, to go beyond first impressions and see the magic everywhere. There's inspiration at every corner, in everyone, if we're willing to look. And today we're here with Kat. Kat, do you want to say hi and tell us about yourself? Hi, yes. Thank you, Martina. Thank you, Christina, for having me today. Um, I my name is Kat Azimi. I am. I live in Maine, and um, I come from Massachusetts. I lived in Connecticut. I lived in uh, San Diego, and now I'm here in Maine. And um, I am a wife, I am a mother to two wonderful girls, Aria and Riley. Aria is five and Riley is nine months now. And um, I am also a business owner. I own a real estate company here in Maine. Um, Myself and two other women run a team of nine total agents, eight of which are women. Um, and, And our vision for that is that we run a real estate company that is based in love and abundance and support to each other and comes from um, sort of like a softer place than I would say the rest of the, that we have seen typically in the real estate world. Um, And so that's sort of the, the basics about me. I love to read. I love design. Um, I, I just, like to be creative in my own little way. I'm not like an artist in any way, but I, I like to be creative. And I think that's about it. And that's, a, that's a good little summary, I think. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for, thank you for being here. And, you know, when I think of you, I I mean, the word that wants to come is the fierce mama bear, right? Mm -hmm. Because I met you when you were pregnant with Riley and, and, you know, and all that ensued after that. And and the fierce stand for her well-being was just incredible to watch, you know, like that. I, I don't know how well, how else or what else I want to say about that other than it just was beautiful, beautiful to watch that fear stand for, for her well-being and not accept what you've been told with regards to what was going to happen and how it was going to be, which is just really really beautiful really like it, it it you know it kind of shows the strength of women in a way right that that just coming out and and not in a it didn't feel like a forceful way but a just clear stand of no this is not how it's going to go and that's part of what I hear in what you're sharing about your business as well mm-hmm. that it's like no this is not how we want to do things we're going this way, <laughs> not that way. We just want to create something new and really powerful, which is really, really so beautiful. So if we really knew you, what would we know about you? What would we know? It's funny because I think even the it's what you bring up with the with my company, and what I feel like is just sort of my story is sort of what you just described, which is that I, like what happened with my daughter this year, which we can get into a little bit is, you know, I feel like I was made for that reason alone. Like, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm in the middle of my life, hopefully like, and yet I feel like almost everything was leading up to that. Like that, that was sort of like a physical manifestation of something that, I feel like 
do I think of it? I think she was here. She was given to me. Like I've never felt anything more intensely than that she was given to me and to like the world to experience something that I've always believed. So in that sense, I feel like my daughter Riley is, like I said, the fitness, physical manifestation of the the message that like I've always wanted to give to the world. And I was challenged in the biggest way. And in some ways I haven't been because things have turned out <laughs> too like remarkably well so far um and yet like the what I was facing with her and her health you know this year really caused me to raise up and just be the person that I've always said that I wanted to be um and so I think what people know about me is um sort of just like an ability to take any situation and say you know we're gonna make the best of it this is what it is this is who we need to be in this situation and um, uh, you know, I kind of have this mantra, which obviously we've all heard is like, everything is working out for me. And there was a point this year when I was like crying in my car to my friends saying, this is just too weird because everything always works out for me. And this story doesn't work out for me. And I don't know what to do with that. And little did I know, like everything is still working out for me. <laughs> and it's just was such a weird place to be, to be in a, in a place where I honestly said this shatters my identity because I just believe that things are always working out for me and um and yet like I said I mean I think it's it's coming right right back around in a way you know it's fascinating because we, we just had somebody on and it was like it's always in divine timing and exactly what needs to happen exactly the way it happens right and 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 it's still working out for you right not the way we had planned it, right? <laughs> but the way it's supposed to be, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because it is the rising to the next level, right? It's like you, you receive that challenge to be able to just break open to a next level of what is possible, what you believe is possible. Like the magic. Chills, because we know each other through Stephanie, um, another coach. Yeah. And so I was coaching with Stephanie and I had been in a place like in my business where I was feeling a little bit, um, you know, sort of burnt out or just confused about like what the purpose was and what I wanted my day to day to look like. And so for months, like almost daily for months, I would just get out a journal and I just write like, what are the things that bring me joy in my life? And it'd be such simple things like reading, spending time with my family, feeling focused, like walking it was just really simple things and then I was like asking myself every day how do I do more of these things and then there were these you know sort of like limiting beliefs and fears that were coming to me like I feel like I'm always taking care of people financially and how do I prove to myself that if I needed it people would be taking care of me or that I am taken care of so all of these questions I was just stewing on for a really long time and I had a phone call with Stephanie and I hung up the phone and I had a call back from my doctor because I had not felt my daughter move all night long. And they were like, come to the hospital immediately or come to the doctors immediately. And I went to the hospital 30, or 29 weeks pregnant and I didn't leave. Like I didn't leave the hospital for 21 days and well, a little bit longer than that. But I immediately was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do for the next 21 days? It's like, read hang out with my family, reflect on things, meditate. Like I was like, I just manifested the worst version of every single thing I was asking for. I mean, obviously it's a gift in and of itself. And then I spent nine months after that. I mean, until about three weeks ago on a maternity leave, like longer than I've taken away from work in my life, really. And being taken care of financially. And like every single one of those questions I had was just given back to me. And like, is that the way that I would have chosen that message to be given to me? Absolutely not. I would do anything to have chosen a different way. But like also throughout all of it, I feel like that is something that I've got an ability to do. Is like, while it's going off way, I'm like, this is so funny. I'm getting everything I asked for. And I just also have to laugh at it, laugh at the divine timing, you know? It's, it feels like, you, you know, like you were challenged for the next level of trust, right? It's like, there, there's nothing else, right? It's like, okay, you asked for it, 
Let me show you how it's possible, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And so fill people in on how your daughter's doing now. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I'll give you a little bit more background because I feel like it's important. But um, so ended up being, and how funny, I'm more, like I just roll my eyes at the whole situation because I like told my nurse in the hospital, you know, the one thing we didn't want is to have a baby on Christmas because who wants to have a birthday on Christmas? Like to the point where I would say when we were trying to get pregnant, it was like, let's avoid this month because we don't want to have a December baby. And um, of course, 30 weeks and four days, like, pregnant totally should not be having a baby Christmas Eve at 4 a.m. My water breaks <laughs> and I have a baby on Christmas Eve, like hilarious to me in a way. Could she could have been born any other time, but of course she'd be born on Christmas Eve. Right. And, um, and so it's like, okay, <laughs> you're making the rules here, you know? And, um, I already had figured out while we were in the hospital that um, she had had a bowel, like a twisted bowel. And so we knew that she was in for like, number one, I mean, being born at 30 weeks was absolutely terrifying. Didn't know what was going to happen. Um, knew she was going to need to have surgery practically as soon as she was born. So she did. She had she had surgery when she was three days old, I think, and um, recovered incredibly well from that surgery. Like, you know, it, it was worse than we had envisioned when she had gotten a surgery. So she's in eight weeks where her bowels were like literally in two pieces and she had an ostomy bag. And like, it was like, we're going to, in eight weeks, we're going to put her body back together. You have to have a second surgery to do that. Um, whereas originally we thought it would only be one. So, you know, eight weeks in the NICU, everything I thought would be bad news at that point, like just was better and better. And the doctors were like, this is incredible. We really haven't seen a baby like handle this as well. Um, and then she had her second surgery and we came back from that surgery and it was like a celebration. They were like, we were worried that her bowels wouldn't grow enough to make up for all this part that needed to get removed. And they said, oh, like another miracle practically. Her bowels grew 53 centimeters or something. I forget what it is. But anyway, it was like on the wall. They wrote it up because they were just like, I, we can't believe this. It's amazing. Um, so we survived that. And then the next day, um, I was there in the hospital and I noticed that she was moving weird and we figured out she was having seizures. And so we didn't know why. And, um, you know, they were like, this must be some weird thing. Like, we don't think it's that significant, but we're going to do an MRI. And then I got a call, um, you know, like a day later from the neurologist and his words were literally just like, it's bad. It's bad. It's very bad. And I was like, what does that mean? And he's like, she's going to need a ton of care her whole life. You know, she has a significant brain damage to basically her entire brain. You should expect that she'll have cerebral palsy, that she will be blind, like cortically blind, meaning like she can see technically, but her brain can't process it. And then, you know, intellectually, we don't know what to expect, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it was just like, how did this happen? Because uh, the surgery went so well. And I, I kept saying, you don't understand, like the surgery went so well. She never was any sort of less than stable. Like for this to have happened, she would have had to lost oxygen for a significant time. We should have noticed, blah, blah, blah. But we didn't see anything. So we kind of just didn't believe it. And so um, obviously like the worst moments of my life. And then, um, you know, we met with another neurologist like a few days later who said it could be anything from like she could be quadriplegic to maybe she's going to have trouble reading in kindergarten. And, um, you know, we don't expect her to be like 100 percent, but like, you know, could be on a really big spectrum. We ended up deciding to do another MRI because I kind of believe something must have been a mistake because like she was doing too well. And um, they did. And then that neurologist, this is the third neurologist. Uh, I'll never forget these words. I say them to myself every single day, uh, wrote in the report that she would potentially have the ability for intellectual interaction. Um, and then the words were, albeit in a child who is disabled otherwise. So like, essentially, he just said, like, you know, hopefully she can communicate with you. And my husband asked, will she be able to show us love? And he did not. He didn't say yes. He didn't know if she would be able to show us love. And um you know, we're just devastated. And I remember like, that's the long story, I guess. But, you know, this is crazy because I'm just holding her and I'm just like, this is not true. Like, this is, I know that this is not true. Like, I mean, who knows what's going to come of it? But I was just like, she's like, 
I mean, anyone would believe this about their baby, but I was just like, look at this little miracle. Like there's just no chance, you know? And like, I would just tell her every day, like you're a miracle healer. I know that you are like you, I mean, she's already healed from everything else way better than they thought. And why won't it also be this one? And so, um, yeah, so it's nine months, uh, it's like seven months from there later. And she's almost about to crawl. She's babbling. The other day I went to pick her up from daycare and like completely out without knowing the daycare person said, she is so smart. When she does one thing one time, she just does it from now. And I was like, you have no idea what you just did to me. Cause like, you don't understand what that meant to me, you know? Um, but anyway, I mean, it's just, it was crazy. Cause around that time, I don't even know where I was going with this, but I feel like there's just no way to like tell that story without knowing a little bit of the background. And, um, you know, it was like very early on, I met with Stephanie and I was just like, I don't know, like I'm already, you know, like a thousand videos deep and children that have cerebral palsy and are in like physical therapy and they're just like little miracles. And that to the point where like, of course I would never ask for my child to be a little miracle, but like, I would be excited to be on that journey if that's the one she had to be on. Like, I was just like, this would, this is cool and inspirational. Like, I don't see the negative in it. And, you know, at the time Stephanie was like, you're just uniquely designed for this. Like whatever way that it turns out, you're uniquely designed to be her mother through it. And so obviously we don't know, I'm not saying she's, you know, clean slate, there's nothing to worry about, but it didn't take me that long, I guess, to realize like, we're going to do what we have to do. And one thing I had found out through that whole journey in the hospital was that every step of the way, I thought if this happens, it'll be the worst thing possible. And then when these things would happen, like, I'd be like, how am I going to be in the NICU? Like, that's going to be horrible. It's going to ruin my life. But then when it would come, I'd be like, this is just my life right now. Like I never would actually feel like it was as awful as I would imagine that it would be in the future. And so I would just tell myself that, like, you know, if it, the worst is the worst, I don't think I'm going to hate it as much as I'm envisioning that I'm going to hate it. I'm just going to be finding the joy and finding the love in those moments. And I just, I'm a person who doesn't want to feel bad. And so I find a way to not feel bad, <laughs> I guess, you know. It's, it's so powerful. You know, it's, you know, Byron Katie says it's your, it's your thoughts that cause the suffering, right? It's just, and, and what you envision is usually so much more, so much worse than what it actually is, right? She says, you know, reality is actually, um, what's the word she uses? Um, it's like quite benevolent as compared with our thoughts, right? Mm, that's so true. Yeah, I haven't even heard that, but that is beyond true. Honestly, it is. Um, I have, a, I guess, I have this little like a little lean ahead in this because um, I got my master's degree in counseling psychology with a focus in cognitive behavioral therapy, and so like I learned through that, or early on, really, just like you know, you don't, can't trust your thoughts. And I just wish everyone knew that. Like, I just, that's the thing. I'm like, but I, I just, I was talking to my friend about being on this podcast and I was showing her some things we might talk about. And she was like, well, I know what your power is. Like you have the ability to be intensely rational in an, in an irrational situation. And it's like, it's not even necessarily rational. It's just like, if I feel like these thoughts aren't helping me, I'm just going to change them. And I'm like, why wouldn't everyone be doing that all the time? It's a much better way to live. <laughs> you know, it's so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like to say we make everything up anyway. So if you're going to make it up, make up something empowering, right? Like, exactly right. Yeah. You're gonna no, I, I call it, I call it practical, right? I totally call it practical. I'm very, very practical. And and I know that it can be quite limiting, right? To the point when, that I didn't own anything white when I had little children because I was like, there's no point, right? Because <laughs> you're going to be dirty in two seconds. So that's not practical, right? So, yeah. so there's limitations to it too, right? But but yeah, there's it's like, yeah, it's a waste of time, right? It's like, why would you waste your energy on something like that? Absolutely. It's true, and it can sometimes come off as cold, I realize, with other people. Like, to be honest, I know that about myself. I'm like, you know, why are we going to think about that? And it's like, people have to go through their feelings, and I'm not always the best at that, because I'm like, let's just change it. Don't feel like feeling bad anymore. Come on, you know? <laughs> 
So it, you have to watch yourself a little bit when you do that. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's like to tell people it's a practice, right? Like, yes, it's easy to do, but you have to get practice in changing those thoughts quickly, yeah. right? Like we all know it's possible. <laughs> Not to catch and, and yes, absolutely. Sometimes you have to allow yourself to sit where you are, right? I I strongly believe that you have to go through to come out. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, somebody was sharing, and I thought it was so interesting. Buffaloes don't like rain. And what they do when they see a storm coming is they run towards it because they know that the sooner they run through it, the sooner it's done. And I was like, yeah. wow, that is yeah. so cool. I right it. it's like just really going through it to come out on the other side sometimes we need we need that as well so it's such a kind of control freak you know it that can be hard to do sometimes but you know, I, it's like this situation in my life this year like 2024 is I just had to keep telling myself the only way out is through the only way out is through like you just have to do it you know Surrender to it yeah mm -hmm. so Kat what would you say your superpower is yeah, um, honestly, I think it goes along those uh, those same lines. Is I was like thinking about this idea. Of, it's almost like a self efficacy. Is that it's? I just did a strengths um, assessment with somebody, hooked in strengths, and one of the things that came up was competitiveness. And I was like, well, that makes me sound awful, kind of maybe. But um, she was talking to me about it, and she's like, the way that you show up as a competitive person is that if you see a situation. You'll just look for examples of people handling that situation and you use it as like a, a, a side by side to say, like, if somebody can do it, then I can do it and then I can just achieve it. And so, like I said, in my um, in my psychology training, it's just called self-efficacy, self right? I'll Whether it's, you know, like, how can I do more business or how can I reach some goal or if it was like, how do I deal with it if I have a child who's, you know, severely disabled? It's just like go find like 10, 15 people that are doing this beautifully. And then like, if they can do it, then I can do it. You know, I just need a proof. And I think I can do that pretty quickly. Like I'm, you know, like I said, I mean, if I don't feel good about something, I'm going to find a way to make it feel good. And so it, that's the only thing I do for a little while is like, com like hyper-focus on how to get to the place that I want to go. I'm going to, I'm going to get it. And then the other thing I would say is just like, that it's always working out for me because I just feel, you know, just I just feel that way. It's like, I'm always like that weird thing happened. And, you know, I'm, I didn't sign up for uh, classes one year at Northeastern because my mom was sick and I thought I was going to have to take care of her. And then when I went to the registrar, like school had started, I somehow got a two day schedule. Like I got the best possible schedule. <laughs> like it is that uh, things are always working out better for me than they really should. Is like a kind of a little mantra of mine. That's got to be some superpower, I guess. Absolutely a superpower. I, I mean, uh, everything's energy, right? So the more positive thoughts you're putting into into the world, the more you're getting that back at you, right? And so it all makes sense. I had a friend post this last week on Facebook, and uh, I keep looking at it almost every day. He wrote, when, we're, when we realize we aren't entitled to anything, we become grateful for everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, yes. That's so true. Mm -hmm. That reminds then, me, like I was thinking, um, I, I, again, like a way that I try to approach the world when I'm in good space, you know, you know, I'm in a good space. If I can do this, it's just like, if you're driving down the road and someone's driving bad, it's like, I don't, you know, that person's not here for me. That person's in their own little journey in their own world. Like they do not owe me anything at all. I just try to practice that. Obviously I'm not always great at it, but like, Again, that's like a good sign that I'm in a pretty good space is when I can see the world and just ex I just experience everyone as like their own person in their own world. Like they don't know me. They don't, they're not trying to inconvenience me. They're just literally doing what makes sense for them right now today, you know? That, yeah. that is so powerful, just that in itself, right? It's like, you know, we, we're, we humans were so quick to, to, take it personally, right? It's like, no, it's not, no, nothing really is, or most of it isn't, right? Um, so that in itself is just really, really, really powerful. Listen to a Brene Brown podcast once. I don't know if you listen to Brene Brown very often, but um, 
her and I mean, how can you not? But her and her sister were talking and it was like her sister is very much like a people are doing their very best all the time. And she has a hard time doing that. And this podcast really like opened up my mind because it's you know, it's like, especially the the situations that are the most painful to you is like your family member that's doing something or like, you know, isn't showing up for you or whatever. And you're constantly like taking that personally. But when you look at it through the lens of like, this person is doing their very best and their very best might not be that good, but like, let's stop expecting their best to be something other than what it is. Just accept them for who they are. Then the pain is gone. Like, it's just not painful anymore, you know? And you can, you can grieve the thing that you need to grieve, which is that you don't have the brother, sister, mother, father, whatever that you wish you did. And then you can just accept the one that you do have. And again, so hard to do, but it's something that like, I think about all the time. I just try to remind myself, like the person I'm angry. And then I'm like, they're doing the best they can. <laughs> you know, like I try to get there. Um, it's just so, it's such a good one. I was really grateful for that yeah. when I heard that last year. It took a lot of time thinking about it. Well, it's beautiful that you say, and then I had to take time to grieve. Like, because it's both, right? It is, it is you have to take time to be in that space that, you know, like with me, with my son, I assume with you, with your daughter, right? Grieving how it, we thought it should be right. and then just accept what is because there's really nothing else to do in this life right and yeah. for me like uh, Abraham's clip everything is always working out for me is one of my favorite like there was a time where I would just listen to that on repeat you know just like everything is always working out for me <laughs> yeah thank you for that yeah I'm so, so interesting to hear that from you too because you know, obviously you're having to face that, you know, you're having to face that every day. And it's like the, it, you know, it's easy for me to say that to myself because so far it feels like things have worked out pretty well considering where we should be. But I think like, I try to tell myself, you know, it could have gone any way and it still could have been, it can go anyway. There's still, I mean, it's, it's like a wait and see for the rest of my life, essentially about what's going to come up. But, um, you know, it's like, everything's always working out for me as long as I see it that way and I find the beauty like it's not really about the outcome at all it's about how you you know how you experience it yeah and it's it's your choice mm -hmm. exactly it's, one, it's your choice yeah. so Kat what made you who you are today like what was your biggest lesson or what took most courage or when did you stand up for something that mattered what made you who you are today I think that what made me ugh, who I am today, like, I think, I think about this often is, so I grew up, my dad, my um, parents, my brother and I, my brother, um, three years older than me, and he played hockey, and is just sort of like, honestly, naturally gifted at things, like he should more gifted than he should be at things. And he was kind of the kid he had, well, I would say like a harder time emotionally than I did. And my parents, my dad particularly wasn't very easy on him, like he, we'd bring him to hockey, and he'd just tell him everything he did wrong. And like, I mean, and like, it was very, very rough. And I was there a lot for that. But like, and I think that I had I gained a lot of empathy through that process for my brother, like I was always there kind of being like, that's unfair. But then, you know, as, as I went on in life, like my brother's not very well, like he's not well, really, because he, you know, like, there's a lot of things I think innately, and then also like his upbringing, um throughout all of that and plus he had like nine or ten concussions like so you know he my brother came somebody that was like very difficult you know but I think I could see throughout all of that like that it's just sort of like a like where's the love here like I think there, there was everything I know like very empathetic you know like growing up I'm a feeler like I know when there's an inch wrong which is like comes from a lot of people who have a little bit more you know like uneasy households um so I got that sort of super, that little superpower from a crappy situation and then the other thing is I think that my family for whatever reason because they really shouldn't be is always like safe and they're always like trying they're always trying to be safe and they're always saying like you can't do that because and I watched like, you know, my mom make decision after decision 
because she felt like she couldn't do something. And I have just like gone so hard in the other direction. It's like, if you, if I decide I want to do something, I'm going to make sure that I make it happen. And it feels like to me, my goal, like in life or my job in life is to show is to be this example that you can have or do or be anything that you want if you take care of yourself, like have the right mindset, put your mind to it, whatever, like whatever needs to be done in order to get there. And so like that's sort of, but I feel like that came from like where I grew up, you know, it made me who I am today. It's just to be somebody who will like work tirelessly on my mindset and you know, exploring spiritually or this or that, whatever it ends up being, is that I just don't really believe in obstacles that much. And it's partially because I was just like watching pain in other people and kind of thinking like, how can we get past this, you know? Or like, you know, I wish my, mo my mom made a decision at one point to, you know, make her life better. And you know, she makes her own decisions and it's up to her, but um, it really solidified that idea for me, you know, that like, you can prove them all wrong. I remember when I wanted to get my real estate license and my mom was like, you know, what about taxes? What about this? Like, there's always a what about. <laughs> and and I'd just be like, what about, what am I missing? You know, <laughs> what am I missing? Like, I'll just make more money and then I'll just pay the taxes. Like, I don't care, you know? I, I just, I, like, I'm not gonna let that be the reason I don't, it'd be so funny. I was like, I'm not gonna make hundreds of thousands of dollars because I don't want to pay this much in taxes. It's just illogical in a way, you know? And um, so I, yeah, I think whatever goal I'm going to set for myself, like I want to do that. And that's the reason why I think. It's so good. I, I can see that there's so many places in my life where I'm doing things because my parents didn't, right? Like my parents hardly ever traveled or like they didn't take vacations. I mean, they took it, but it was just to go to our house upstate and that was it, right? Like we never flew anywhere unless it was like visiting grandma in Florida, right? Like yeah. and so, an adult was like, I will be traveling. I won't do that. Um, and not to say my, par my parents gave me a lot. Like, believe me, my parents were amazing and taught me to love and to be giving back and part of your community. But but that was a piece that I watched them like, wow, like what, why don't you get back to yourself more? Like, um, so that was a big piece for me learning was in, in watching them not take care of their health, take care of their well being, And, uh, and yeah, so I can get that completely. So put you in a funny place to think about that. Like whenever I think about those things about my parents, I go, well, then they're, my kids are just going to do this to me. But like, that's the good thing right is we just try to move the needle like a little bit and you know do a little bit of what we wish had been done and hope we make some progress you no know we're gonna fail at the same time but yeah absolutely I you know I know my clearly my parents looking back in hindsight I could be like my mom her passions were just different right like my mom was passionate about singing she sang in her church choir she sang in a local community theater she sang in a choral group she sang around the house cleaning like yeah. She was passionate about helping in the community that my parents were Girl Scout leaders, softball coaches, ran the blood driver in our church. Like for them, that was what gave them joy. I didn't quite get it as much when I was younger. Wait, I wait. saw them just as burning themselves out. But for them, that was what gave them their joy. They didn't need to travel and do the things I thought they were missing out on. But for me, as a younger me, yes. it gave me different possibilities. But I wasn't seeing life through their lens, clearly. So. Isn't that funny though? Yeah. And it's still, it matters. And like, like I said, I was like, every decision I make, like that is sort of in spite of those things. It's funny because they made those decisions like consciously and knowing that not all, everyone was from this like very victim-y place. I mean, maybe yeah, a lot of it gave them great joy. So <laughs> funny, but yeah, I, I, I still treasure what I got out of what I thought they were missing. So it's all. Exactly. All yeah. To worry. Um, <laughs> and, um, and your children are, either gonna do what you're doing or not right it's like that it's they picked us for whatever they came in for to learn and grow right mm -hmm. so so whatever they're gonna rub against it doesn't matter they're gonna find something whether it's that or something else they're gonna take the perfect mix of what we're offering and some of the things are going to rub against and some of them the things they're going to take and run with right it's just really that's all there is, right? Always. 
And there's so, no really getting it perfect because it's like, I wouldn't be who I was today if it weren't for some of the things that are harder, you know? I, I would not change them, like the worst of the things. Like, I wouldn't change them because I wouldn't change who I am. And so I was like, okay. Sometimes it's a little relieving when I feel like I've had a bad parent day. I'm like, well, maybe not, you know, sharpens the ax in the right spot. <laughs> like, I, I'm just kidding, but, you know. I just, well, but <laughs> but they, like who they were helped you form you into who you are, right? And again, can we look at that for every person on this planet, right? The people we think they're assholes or the, th the people we think are so great, right? It's like, it's... the you know, they rubbed against something and, and that made them who they are, right? And 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 they're here for us to learn. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, you exactly. were talking about that, right? It's just always the perfect thing, right? It's, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. So Kat, what fills you up? What do you do to recharge your batteries? And I just, I think, Deep conversation is probably the big one, right? Like I'm, I'm so not, I can not small talk. I hate it. I don't want to, but just having coffee or dinner with a friend and talking about like the more deep, intense stuff is, that's what I need in life. Totally. Pretty simple. <laughs> Love it. That's connection and that's deep conversations or talking about things that matter. Stimulation um, and yeah, I mean this right now. This is so definitely fills me up. You know, getting to know people and seeing the way people view the world and just taking a little tidbit for myself here and there of like what what things you're inspiring me with and all of those things are just really what makes life meaningful in my in my my mind. You know. Mm -hmm. I'm so curious how it would be to walk around with you when you're selling or buying, like assisting somebody to 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 sell or buy a house. Like the conversations you have and the relate. Like I'm just sitting here. I'm like, wow, that would be quite interesting to just be a, be a little, you know, observant yeah. on, on that process and and how that's. Uh, what that looks like, right? Because you say that you that that's what fills you up. I assume that you bring that into probably every area of your life, right? The conversation you have. I definitely think my, it's funny because you think like, you know, I, I got a master's degree. In, I mean, sorry, I got a, I got my bachelor's degree in behavioral neuroscience and then ended up getting a psychology degree. And then I'm here selling real estate. And you would think like those years were all like wasted, you know, thousands of dollars, but no, totally not. Like I just understand people in a different way. And, you know, I got into real estate really because it's funny because I got my uh, master's in counseling. I worked in counseling in Connecticut, actually where I met Stephanie that we connected. And then I moved to San Diego and it was like, you cannot actually like just go to another state and use your counseling degree because there's rules. Right. And so I was getting into coaching, life coaching at that time a little bit. And, um, some rec other recovery work and then I figured well you know if I'm going to be a co like if I'm going to be a coach and you figure out how to like sell services I just didn't have any idea so I just got a job selling real estate websites to real estate agents in a call center like the worst job on the planet like telemarketing <laughs> oh my god I had more fun than like anyone on the planet like it's still to this day probably my favorite job ever like it was so fun I'm just calling people all day connecting with them and it really kind of figured, made me figure out, number one, like sales is just not what we, no, it doesn't have to be what we think it is. And it's really about building trust with people and how do you build trust and like do it quickly and not in a way that takes advantage of them, but that gets them where they want to go. Like sales is coaching. It's just figuring out what people need and getting them something that's going to help them do it. And so I got into real estate from there because I had talked to so many real estate agents and I was like, you know, I guess real estate is just a vehicle for me. It's like, I want to help people get somewhere that fulfills them, makes them better. And real estate is one way to do that. And then real estate is a way to show that like 
people around me that um, if I want to sell X amount of houses, I want to do this much production. If I want to build a business, I can do that. And so I get to do that little inspiration thing, or I get to do that like modeling thing that I want to do through real estate. And then, you know, I get to coach other agents on sort of like their limiting beliefs. So it, it's all just a vehicle for me. Like I just, it, you know, I could be doing, I could, it's a widget, you know, like I could be selling Cutco knives or whatever it is, I think. And it would be similar, but it's really about like, that connection with people to figure out what it is that they want. And, you know, with my company now, like one of our big goals is to really bring that experience to people of like, your home is not just your, like, it's just not just a house, you know, like your environment matters, where you are matters. Like this is the thing that's making you believe X about yourself or whatever, and what's holding you back. And, you know, what is your goals 10 years from now or 15 years from now? And how does the decisions you make now in real estate get you there? It's all just a coaching thing. Like, it's just so fun to be able to see and go in with somebody and say, like, what is it? What is it that we can help you get out of the way? You know, you wanted to do this, but you're afraid of selling and buying your interest rates. And even if it has to be very logical, rational work, I can do that if it helps them get to the point like, let's look at the numbers of it like let's get to reality on here you know what steps do we need to take for you to see that like the thing you want the, the dream that you have is just totally there it's within reach you just need to like open up to it um so yeah i think that that's hmm. exactly what you said it's just fun it's really fun going on that journey i love my job so much i cannot wait until you create a business out of that one yeah. like really training people I can I can so see that and the difference that's going to make for every realtor really right because it is a little bit of cutthroat business and and very pushy and manipulative and so finding that softer approach and really supporting the customer right that's part of what I hear right really taking care of people rather than getting their money right because ultimately you're going to get the money if you take care of them right so so that's part of what I hear and what you're saying so yeah. I also hear that it because you're creating that groundwork of really listening to what they want that it's probably more effective and you probably save a lot of time and not like showing properties that would be a waste because they don't really know what they are looking for. If you really set them up powerfully, the whole process is going to go so much smoother too. Yeah, definitely. No, definitely. I, I and it's funny because sometimes I uh, like I have been close friends I'm working with right now and we, I never do this, but I showed them 12 properties in one day. And at the end of the day, they were so bummed because I didn't like any of them. And you see 12 houses, you don't like any of them. Then you kind of think like, I guess, we can't move because there's nothing out there. And I was like, no, this is just the, this is, this was like the learning experience. And they went home and this is actually all on them. I can't take any credit. They went home and they said they had a three hour session of like whiteboarding about what their dreams were for the future and how they want to have it. And I was like, that is exactly, that's exactly what it is. You know, it's like, this isn't about finding your next home or getting out of a rental. It was about the fact that you want to have a camp on the lake and you also want to have a place not on the lake because you know my friend doesn't want to be remote and like how do you guys make those both happen and make you both happy and it's their marriage that we're talking about like it's it's so not just a piece of real estate it's so many things you know so that part is just so fun to get into and see and help people when people are willing to share I will say you know obviously you, in any business you work with some people who really like light you up and it's really, you know, you get that feel good feeling. And then sometimes you get people where it just doesn't get there. And I try to do more, you know, more business with the people that we get that connection. I, you know, like the moment you started talking about them, I was like, that's your ideal client, right? It's like, yeah. that's your ideal client. It's like every day, please bring, bring only those of the, please bring me all. Only <laughs> I, know, those. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I had this great, speaking of ideal clients, like crazy, crazy story and how like the universe just, hands you what you need is that um like 18 19 months ago I made a phone call to this couple who I did not know at all never met them I just called them because they had been on the market their house didn't sell so they were like an expired I talked to the husband he's like my wife is giving birth but we do need to sell and we had a little conversation but he was like well obviously like we're not ready now we're having this baby or we just had a baby like two days ago and after that, I try to contact him, but I find out now that like he always has his phone on silent. And so it would always go to voicemail and I figured he'd block me or something. And I kind of had this belief, but I just stayed in touch anyway, like sent emails, no response, no response. 
So this summer, when like the first real estate thing that I do is I get a call from this guy or text and he's like, I'm ready. We're ready to sell our house. Can we meet? And I was like, yeah, I'm like, got the baby settled. I go to work for the first time. And I was like, so how's your son? I remember you had a son like the day I called you and he was like, he's doing really well now, but he was born 10 weeks early. He was in the NICU at Maid Med for 10 weeks. He was on oxygen for 10 months. Like we had PT and OT. We spent probably like a half hour talking about real estate and two hours talking about like the doctors that we had known. And I was just like, this is the exact people that I needed to connect with to like bring me back into real estate. They literally had the same experience as me, you know, no brain injury, but they had other things to worry about. And it was just like so wild. And I'm working with them right now. or like, you know, they're going to close in a, a week or two on that house that they're selling and buying. And they've been trying to sell this house for a long time. And it just, fills me with the most amount of joy to like give them something great right now and give that little kid a house that they want and all that it's just so special but it like chills that that would be the call that I would get 18 months later and I've only talked to him one time in my life like I love the divine timing of it right because before it was not the right timing for that house to sell Mm -hmm exactly insane though like mind-blowing these things when they happen you know yeah it's like it just it, there's no real purpose to it other than just like looking up and going you got me you got me I know you do like these are the moments when I see you know beautiful beautiful so Kat if you had a magic wand and you could give people any quality what would it be and why Empathy, definitely. I think, you know, we talked about this already a little bit, but if you could just be quick to empathy all the time, I feel like your life is just so much better, you know, like instead of quick to anger, or quick to, you know, judgment or quick to resentment, it's like, how can you be the most empathetic and understanding and I guess non judgmental, like as quickly as possible? You know, I think that's the thing. The whole world would just be such a better place if we could all be there. If we could be at the stoplight and just assume that that person's driving on their way to their hospital or just got the call that their kid has a brain injury or, you know, like um, their mom just passed away or whatever. Like if I just believed that about everyone I meet, whether it's true or not, I mean, it doesn't matter what the situation is. Everyone has that situation. Like I could turn to anyone right now and say, what's the thing that's making you not be your best self right now? And it would be a valid reason, like, you know, because <laughs> it's valid to them. Um, and I think if we can do that for each other, then there's like only connection and just softness in the world. Like pain is just so pain and pain and pain are created by judgment. Amen. Yeah. I feel like, wouldn't that just solve everything? I said a couple of weeks ago to Martina with another guest that I've been playing this game of, can I interact with every single person that I interact with on the day? Like they're having their absolute worst day and I get to make a difference for them. Whether it's just my smile as I'm walking down the street or holding a door for someone, can I choose to make a difference with every single person? And it, it's so different. It's such a different experience going through the day. And people want to interact with you when you smile at them and, or hold the door for them and or co- comment a, a, a total stranger on their beautiful outfit. Yeah, totally. Because honestly, most people dress really nice when they're having a bad day. <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. They're in fake it till you make it mode. And you comment and they're like, oh, bless your heart. Thank you so much. You made my day. And oh, oh yeah. my God, really, if that's all it took was for me to just say something nice, I could do that all day long. I mm-hmm. could get out of my head and do that. And then my day is so much better for it. So that's my new game. That is totally 100% true. I agree. <laughs> it's, it's everything so, better. So Kat, who do you want to be when you grow up? If you could be anything or do anything, if there were no time or money restrictions, what would you want to do and why? So funny. I feel like in a way I'm doing it. Like, I mean, I just love what I do. Real estate's great. But again, it doesn't have to be real estate. I just think as long as I am connecting with people, I definitely think I wanted to go more from, like more into the coaching experience 
over time. And for whatever reason, I've been holding back and I'm trying to make more of that journey to just like feeling comfortable to just only be in that realm rather than just like being the example. Like, let's just sit here and let's talk and um, create that space for people. But, you know, other than that sort of like very specific change to the way that it happens, I mean, I just want to, you know, not in like an egocentric way, like I want to inspire people, but I just, I hope that the things that I do bring people closer to where they want to be. Like I, that's, that's really the important part in my life. Yeah. I just want to, you know, what was the thing I was just thinking of a second ago, I was going to say, but I'll probably think of it in a minute, but, um, you know, just make a difference, just make a difference in people's lives. And it's not, people do that differently. I don't, I mean, I'm not to say that I don't volunteer or give or money or anything like that, but that's just like, I don't feel like, I feel like the way that I will give will be my energy more in the presence. And I do want to be more present with people. Um, oh, I remember what I was going to say is that also this other piece that we haven't really touched upon as much, but I do think is so important in who I want to be is, um, We've been talking about for our own company, like what are our values and a word that keeps coming up is aspirational. And it's like this idea that I think people want to feel worthy and there's, I mean, obviously people want to feel worthy, but like, I want people to feel worthy. And even like, you know, your environment, the way that the place that you set, the way that you feel, the way that you look or whatever. And that there's like, in a sense, this idea of like a luxury experience and all the things that come along with it. It's like, you don't have to be in a luxury price point of something in order to feel luxurious. Like, how do we bring that to people? Because, you know, if you go into, I don't know, just think of anywhere, like and, like some brand that just makes you feel so good, it changes what you believe about yourself, like on a deep level, when you get that experience that you haven't always had, right? Like I didn't grow up poor by any means, you're very middle class, but still it was like, we shopped at... Kmart and Walmart and like JC Penny and, and any name brand was like off the table. But it's just, you know, just to say like, well, when you experience those things in that way, you just feel differently about yourself. And so like, even if it doesn't mean brand names or this or that, like how do we give people the experience that they are worthy of those things, you know? And one minute of that will change the way you see yourself going forward. And you'll reach for like a little more of it all the time, right? So. That's the other piece of like what I want. I want to be more of that so that I can share it with others and just like raise them up, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I, I totally see you in the coaching. Like I, th that's why I said, I cannot wait for you to, to start doing that. Like I can see it. Like I, I see it. So it's coming. <laughs> I so appreciate you holding it's, that. For me, it's definitely and, coming. And it's probably coming come soon. So I know it's going to happen in its own right time. Because, but I think it's funny because people see it clearer for me than I see it for me. And I am not. And we just talked about all the ways that I feel like I find the, the this feels like the most important part of my life and thus the hardest also to yeah. get like it's like I'm gonna make that jump but it means so much to me that it's also hard for me to make that jump I guess I don't know of course of course so you talked quite a bit about your business is there anything else you want to tell us about it any way how people can find you whether it's potential buyers or sellers or people who want to just dwell in your business in your wisdom and in your you know <laughs> You can always use my regular, um, my work email for everything. So, I mean, obviously I'm in Maine here. If anyone happened to be listening to this and also thinking they need to buy or sell a home, no matter where they are, I certainly would love to connect them with a person near them who I felt like would give them an experience that I would want to give them. So in that sense, um, no matter where you are, certainly would love to chat about your goals uh, in real estate because that's just something that I do and know a lot about. Um, and you could find me at cat with a K, K-A-T, at, and then 207realtypartners.com. So R-E-A-L-T-Y partners with an S.com. Um, our website's 207realtypartners.com. Our Instagram is 207. It's pretty easy to find if you got that. Um, but I think also, you know, I'd love to, connect with anyone 
sort of, who's just on that journey of like, I want to achieve this thing or this goal. And how do I find, you know, I just, I'm such a strong believer that when you know where you want to go, it's easier to get there. That when you um, know why you want to be there, it's easier to get there. So whether that was in real estate or sales or anything, like, oh, I love to talk to anybody. I love to talk to anybody about that. But of course, if anyone's thinking about getting into real estate, um, that would be a great topic for us to talk about. <laughs> so. Beautiful, beautiful. And we're going to put all your contact info in the notes so people can easily find it. If you happen to be in Maine, then I would certainly like to personally sit and connect about the real estate aspect. But again, like I said, I mean, it's no no loss of love for real estate, but it's honestly, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be real estate, you know? It's really about like, if anything about anything I've said has made anyone feel like they'd want to chat, then the deep conversation is going to fill me up. So let's chat, you know? <laughs> Beautiful. So beautiful. Kat, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your journey with us oh, and you. for your beautiful energy. Um, I wish you the best with Riley and we can't wait to hear about more and more miracles. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to follow your journey. Um, thanks again for being with us. Thank you everyone who is listening today. If you love this, please leave us a review. Um, please share with your friends. My screen is glitching out on me today. And please remember that you are extraordinary and you rock. Until next time, Martina. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Kathy, you want to say bye? Bye. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs>